Yes, thank you so much for uh, tuning in this evening from any part of the world where you are. My name is Apostle Helen Rudokeno and I'm preaching from Majesty Christian Television Network uh, to bring to conclusion the message on uh, breaking the power of guilt. As you know that uh, 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 last uh, uh, two days ago I preached on um, uh, repentance and um, freedom from guilt. So uh, today I want to just uh, continue on that uh, repentance uh, and having freedom uh, freedom from guilt. So uh, when you repent, it means that you are turning away from yourself and then you are putting focus on God. Shall we pray? Father God, I bless you for all our viewers. And I thank you for the privilege you've given unto us to minister unto them through this uh, uh, Majesty Christian Television Network. Let them, as they hear the sound of my voice, let them be set free from anything that has been uh, trouble around them, more especially the power of guilt. And let them have the humility to repent and to know that God's word is yea and amen. If God promised them that when they repent that they will be forgiven, let them have the boldness to come to that time through the word of God and to repent and to believe in it and know that they are being forgiven. I thank you for those who are healing today, those who will repent and those who will turn from their old ways. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this opportunity and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So repentance, as I said, is the key word for us to come out of guilt. And I was telling us a few days ago how to really repent. Because some people sit there and then they are wondering, how can we really repent? And I said to us that when you repent, certain things will happen around you. You will be humbled. Secondly, you will, you will confess what you've done. The Bible says, in James chapter 5, 16, he said, Confess your transgression or your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So, when you confess your sins, when you repent, you will actually confess your sins. So, that repentance means you will now take up a new nature. You would turn yourself from obeying self, but now you will want to obey God and to obey Him alone. So I spoke to us on how we can repent and some of the ways that we can really repent is first to baptize ourselves, secondly is to put up a new nature and, and, then, and, and then, you know, believe in what God says that we are. That's what I want to talk about today. Repenting leads us to believe in the word of God. That means you don't see yourself anymore as what the devil will continue to want, make you to believe that you are, but you see yourself in the word of God the way God sees you. You just put yourself in that word and Clothe yourself with the word of God, even though the devil will try to be reminding you that, hey, is it not you who stole some few days ago? Is it not you who cheated some few days ago? Is it not you who, 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 who lied some few days ago? Is it not you? Is it not you? If you know you have confessed that sin and then you have repented, that means you now, you now, you are no more allowing the flesh. You are allowing yourself to rule you, but now you are being governed by God and uh, you are now making yourself to be ruled by God if you know you've sincerely done that and that's what you are doing don't allow those words that the devil will be throwing to in your mind and trying to make you dwell in those things you did so he will call you an alcoholist he will call you a gambler he will try to call you an adulterer and, uh, and try to make ridicule you but believe in the word of God that's what I want you to, 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 to know. That repenting will bring you unto believing what God says that you are. He says you are a royal priesthood. God says you are a holy nation. 
God says you are a peculiar person. God says your sins have been forgiven. The moment you have come in times with him, he says, if you confess that sin, you will be forgiven. Even though your sins be as red as crimson, they will become as white as snow. He said, once you have come and you have brought that confession and you have agreed that indeed you made a mistake, you will surely find forgiveness. That's the word. Hallelujah. That's the word. So you believe that what Jesus said about who you are is who you are. You believe in the atonement of the blood of Jesus because through the atonement of the blood Lord, we have redemption. Our sins have been forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter how the devil try to register that thing in your mind, continue to believe that the atonement of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary have paid for your sins. It has wiped your guilt away. It settles it. The atonement of that blood. Because no other blood is speaking. Other blood, when they speak, they speak revenge. But the one Jesus Christ, which he did for you and me, that, that through that atonement, through that his death on the cross of Calvary, he silenced the power of guilt. So that when you appropriate that blood in your mind, and you appropriate it in every part of your body, you say, I'm not a new creature in Christ Jesus. I believe in what he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. I'm able to be a new creature according to his word. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm not just an ordinary person anymore. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm Abraham's saint, and I'm entitled to God's blessing. You believe it. You don't allow the devil to ridicule you. Hallelujah. That is the way to repent. To repent will bring you into believing in what God says his word is. You will no more be doubting the word of God, but you will just take it literally. You will take the word of God for what it is. Hallelujah. Repentance, when you, when you are repenting, you have to come into terms with the word of God that says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. That's what he tells us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. So you sin. Even the next person that is accusing you is also a sinner. Even the priest that stands and he's preaching was sin and God forgave him. So if God can, can tell us that all have sinned, so you are not the only one that sinned. So when the devil try to hinder you by bringing you into condemnation, you let the devil know that the Bible said it. All have sinned and God shut out the glory of God. Recognize that you are a fallen sinner. Recognize that. Recognize that. Recognize that you are falling short of God's glory. Don't compete with God and tell him and deny that you, you never sinned. Don't compete by Sin, by, by making him to be a liar by his word or, or seeing your sin and, and not acknowledging it. Don't compete. Don't, 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 don't pretend about it. Realize that you are a fallen sinner and you are only saved by grace. Because when people don't recognize that they are fallen sinners, when don't, they, they don't recognize that that humanity entirely have fallen, they, they go about pretending, making themselves look too holy. We call them in my evil language, holy wedge. They look too holy, they look too righteous, too pious, and then they act as if they, they, uh, uh, those who are falling around them shouldn't fall, and they have no right to repent, and Christ should not welcome them, even though they have fallen and repented. You know, sometimes I see some church folks who try to make those who are fallen. I mean, a, a girl has already gone and, and had committed illicit sex that have brought uh, illegitimate pregnancy. And now, do we need to cast that child away from the house of God? Do we need to cast that youth away from the house of God? When, the, when people are now repent and they come back and they are sorrowful over what they have done, we have the right to embrace them. We don't need to allow them to go to the guilt of condemnation anymore. We don't need to allow them to feel so inferior and then, and then they, 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 they feel that there's no hope anymore. No, 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 no. The Bible said all have sinned. So if you are in your home and you have fallen or you have a child, a daughter who have fallen into sin but have repented, uh, read the scripture for that child. Let that child receive back hope and know that all have fallen and gone short of the glory of God. 
Well, you know, why, what makes people not to understand the scripture is when they have too much confidence in himself. We are in a generation that have too much confidence in ourselves. We believe too much that we are too right. We believe too much that we cannot sin. We believe too much that nobody can tell us what we have to do. We believe too much. So when we now make that mistake and, and we go and hide because, because we don't want people to realize that we have fallen. But Jesus, but the word of God says it, all have fallen short of the glory, including you, including me. We are only saved by grace. Hallelujah. 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 So recognize that and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, know that you are human, that you are bound to make mistakes and, uh, and acknowledge that you made that mistake and then look unto God who is the author and the finisher of your faith to give you a brand new nature once you have confessed. Hallelujah. And once you have repented. So the next thing that you have to do when you are repenting is that you have to allow your past to be the past. Hallelujah. You have to put your past behind. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. It says we have to what? press forward. Press towards trusting God. Press towards the redemption. Press towards the, the redeeming power. Press forward. And put if things um, are backwards, press forward towards receiving your goal. You don't need to be looking at your past because your past is there to intimidate you. But look beyond your past and press forward onto, onto a higher calling, the Bible calls it. You move forward because. I mean, you have a mission to accomplish in this world. Not only to be known as a liar. Not only to be known as an adulterer, a fornicator. Oh, listen to me. Jesus Christ, through his atonement on the cross, has brought us over to himself. That when we appropriate his blood, we now become a new nature. All things have passed away. Because behold, all things have become new. So you now press forward towards your new calling. You press forward. You put the past behind and move forward to receiving the new calling that Christ has for you. Your past should not intimidate you. When the devil tries to remind you about your past, tell him he has no future. Are you hearing me somebody? Tell him you have no future. Many of you are seated there and even though you have confessed your sin and then you feel you have repented, but you refuse to let the past all the time. You, you will just be having flashbacks. You turn this way, you have flashback. You have flashback. You have flashbacks. Whoops, you remember that, oh, you were once in this decadence. Listen to me. Let the past be the past. And let the devil no more have future of you. Hallelujah. Let the past be the past and press forward for a new calling because God has so many things that he wants you to do in the kingdom for him. So why dwelling in the past? Why allowing guilt to hold you all day long when Christ has forgiven you? And the next thing you have to do is just block everything that will always make you look at the past. Whether it's a relationship, if those people don't want to forgive forgive you, say bye to them and go to another environment. If you know you have confessed your sin, if you know you have repented, so don't stick around those people who will want to keep reminding you about your past. Stick around those who will want to celebrate you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Feel really like preaching. Stop condemning yourself. The moment you know you, are, you have repented, don't sit anymore. Just keep condemning yourself. No, no, no. No. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans 14, 22, happy is the one that does not condemn himself. Don't sit and be condemning yourself. Do you understand? There are some folks, all the time they sit, they only condemning themselves. If I, did, if I had known, oh, I shouldn't have done it this way. Oh, I shouldn't have done it this way. Oh, I would have done it better. You know, I would have been there for my children. Oh, I would have been there for my family. Oh, oh, they condemn themselves 24-7. Child of God, come out of it. It's not helping you. The Bible says, happy are those who do not condemn themselves. Don't condemn yourself anymore. Don't kill yourself for the mistake you made. Come out of it. If you've repented genuinely, make sure you come out of 
that which is making you to condemn yourself. Come out of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say come out. Tell yourself I'm coming out of it. Don't ever allow that that distance. Don't don't settle there. Don't don't settle. Don't 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 don't, don't settle in, in condemning yourself. Don't don't I mean the worst thing is for you to allow your emotions to be condemning you all the time. You are just you know, it's not it's not it's not that it's your neighbor condemning you, but it's you not condemning yourself. You always condemn. Ah, I would have been a better person by now. If I hadn't done this, this would have... No, come out of that self-condemnation. Come. Jesus told that woman, uh, that woman in the book of Matthew, uh, John 8, he said, woman, who are those people condemning you? The woman said, they've run. They are no more. Jesus said, well, go and see no more because I myself will not condemn you. And the woman left. She didn't go about condemning herself. The other woman that Jesus also spoke to in the book of John chapter 4, the woman in the pool of Sychar, after the woman had, uh, you know, condemned, after they had condemned the woman, condemned the woman, the woman as well, she, she, when she received her liberty and her freedom, she did not allow herself to condemn her anymore. She went in the fullness of that repentance which Jesus has granted her. That she walked in that repentance. And that gave her the power to break the power of guilt that would have been hanging around her, seeing all of those men who used her and camped her and still though they didn't marry her. So Jesus Christ gave her the, uh, the forgiveness of Jesus made her to walk very boldly in that same environment, in that same village, in that same city, see the people who, who messed her up and yet she didn't feel condemned. She saw herself as a new nature. She saw herself in the realms of the word of God. She said, oh, you knew me. That was yesterday, but not now. Because you have no present with me and you have no future with me. I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. Hallelujah. That's the way you have to act and behave when you have received, when you know you have repented. That's the way to repent. To repent, to repent means to, to forget about the old nature and then and behold yourself in a new nature. Hallelujah. The next thing you have to do is to what? Have godly sorrow. Have godly sorrow. Make sure you have it. Why? Because, you see, the Bible tells us in Second Corinthians chapter 7, 10, it says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Godly sorrow worketh repentance, which brings us unto what? Salvation. So, godly sorrow will make you to realize what you've done and bring you into re repentance. And if you see, if, if, you, if you don't handle godly sorrow very well, it can also lead you into disappointment. That means you can you you may you may just you may you may be in a state where you perpetually feel disappointed. But feel have godly sorrow. Have it in the way it has to really be done. Not that you would be having it and then at the same time you are so disappointed in yourself. You are so disappointed in the circumstance that made you to do the thing. You are so... No, 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 no. Let your godly sorrow bring you into real repentance. Into, into that place where you will not sit and you walk out your salvation with fear and with trembling. You know, because you've repented, you don't want to fall into that. You don't want to be too excited and carry the way the way you were, the way you will carry the way, and that you that led you into those drunkenness that made you to mess up yourself or do this and do that. But now, just you carry yourself in a holy way. You carry yourself sober in a very sober manner. You know, working out your salvation, working it out. Repenting and working out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, being conscious that you don't want to go back into that sin and again. You don't want to you don't want to go back into that thing that lured you into that sin. Do you understand? That's what godly sorrow will bring in you. 
It will not bring you into a place of, of, of being disgusted. It will bring you into a place of genuine repentance. And then you see it, you, 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 you begin to look for a better way of following God. Hallelujah. So when you repent, don't forget, you keep knocking, keep knocking at the door. Keep knocking, keep asking, 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 keep seeking God and knocking, and knocking at the door of heaven. Through your prayer, through your fasting, through the studying of the word of God, you just keep knocking. You understand? You know, you, you keep, you want to feed more on the word of God. You want to do more of the work of righteousness, you know, that will, that will really make your heart so free and so liberated from your past. Because he that seeketh shall what? Find. He that knocketh at the door of righteousness, it shall be opened for him. How do you do those things? Is by what? If there's no physical door, you go and be knocking at the door. What I mean is that you just devote time to study the word of God. Devote time to fast and pray. Devote time, you know, to read the word. When you begin to do those things because you want to know a better way of following God, a better way of serving God, a better way, you know, of, 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 of applying or asking for forgiveness. When you, uh, when you begin to read, those, read, the story, read the word of God and be at the feet of Jesus Christ to, to, to be edified, as a matter of fact, everybody will know that you've repented. Everybody, you know, because the more you pray, the more the nature of Christ is coming in you. The more you study the word of God, the more the nature of Christ is coming in you. When you come out, people will no more see the old in you. They will not see Christ in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you don't, you don't say you, 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 are, you have repented and then you still carry the same old nature. You still watch all, this, all those soap series 24-7, not making time to study the word. When you have repented, you will make time now for the word of God. And you will make time to hear it and you will make time to accept it. Hallelujah. And what next? And that's bringing me almost to the closure. It means that you have to also to keep following Jesus. When anyone who has repented doesn't just go back to the world, you keep what? Following Jesus Christ. Keep following Him. Once your repentance has been accepted, you just continue to be humble to follow Christ. You don't just you don't you don't you don't you don't stop following Christ and then you say okay I do it in my home I, I will no more go to go to, I will not I will not go to the garden of the brethren now I do it on my own let me stay at home let me do it no 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 you will continue to follow Christ you will continue to be in the in the garden of the saints you will continue just continue that's the sign of total repentance you don't repent and then you go back to your own nature you repent. And then, and then we see it in the way you, you, you come to church, the, the way you, you not come early, you, the way you really want to do, go be in the presence of God all the time, the way you, 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 know, you, you, you come to conferences, the, the way you even, even pay extra, go, do extra, extra things just to make sure that you, 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 you be where, where believers are. The, you, so you keep following Christ. You just... Keep following Christ. That is a sign. So I believe that if you will do all of this genuinely, the power of that guilt will never, never come back to you. And then you will be in total freedom to serve God and total freedom to fulfill your calling here on earth. I believe that this message will be a blessing to you because it's now bringing to the closure of my topics on or breaking the power of guilt and repentance that's the key repenting repenting from the, the from the things you've done genuine repentance will help you to walk in freedom and the power of guilt will be a, a history in your life i thank god for you have followed this series please go to the youtube type my name apostle helen and then see all the series on this uh, breaking the power of guilt 
when you take them one after the other, by the time you finish the whole eight series, I believe that your life will not be the same anymore. And you will end the year being joyful. You will end the year being happy because your sins have been forgiven. And you've been helped to come out of the power of guilt. May God bless this word you've received. And please write me, call me, email me, tweet me, and let me know how I will continue to be a blessing to you. I see you again. Stay blessed and wishing you a new month. Bye.